Because he probably heard me say, you know, to the of his anti Jesus and squeeze as the Son of God. So he's writing from a hostile perspective. But yet, still, he's given a historical account. Uh, St. You mentioned the name. Taken the body. 
because the Jews wanted him to be there. The fact that he wasn't there messed them up. Yeah. The, the, the Christians, the Christians, why would the Christians take the body as a lie? Like we're going to make up a story that he's resurrected. They know it's a lie, but yet now they're willing to go to their death. They, they're scarred when he was arrested, so that, that's not feasible. And you can go through many more. The third one is, which I've read, most of the disciples, most of the disciples are convinced they saw Jesus resurrected. And I don't quite remember the fourth one yet. I can Google it. So, it's the overwhelming evidence. Overwhelming. Now, buddy, let me tell you something. I don't just listen and go, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I have spent a hopeless amount of hours. Because we're talking about life eternal. And what I'm following better be right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm convinced. I am convinced. Not only am I convinced, but hostile scholars all over the world are convinced. Yeah. That there's something happened there. We don't quite know. We don't quite believe. But they believe because they scarpered and these men now are willing to be sold in half, crucified, have the intestines ripped out, drowned, hung upside down. All kind of heinous for a belief that they're not, not willing to relent on even on today. Jesus lived, bro. It's very simple, it's very simple. Because we can't work, we can't work out there. We can't, no, no. No, we can't do enough, we can't, you know, if I'm a good, what it is, I'm a, if I'm a good man, I'll make it. God will let me in. If I'm a good man. Which one of us is good? Really? Come on. We all got demons. When I say we all got demons, I don't have any demons because I'm in Christ. But when I say that, I say that figuratively, where we all sin. We all disobey God. Even sometimes we know we're doing it and we just need Jesus. You know what I mean? Because we're flesh and blood and the Bible says God is merciful because he understands the flesh and blood. He holds that hand to you and says, this is my hand of grace. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to work anymore. You don't have to work on the cross. Yeah. I was, I was born of a virgin. I showed you who I was by the miracles. I died and rose again for you. I took your penalty on the cross. And now I've raised to heaven. And when I return, I will pay everybody according to their works. And when I say according to their works, I don't mean according to the law as in how good a person is in, whether or not you have accepted what he's done. Actually, you know, you understand what I'm saying, brother? Whether or not you And it's very simple and... Perfect, and, and oh, right, brother. Yeah. You see, the devil wants to complicate things. Yeah, yeah, complicate it. Counter, complicate it. Counter, he, he, wants to, counter, he, wants to, he wants to give you a pinball in your head. Yeah, yeah. A pinball machine in your head. And it's not complicated.
hundreds of murderers. Well, he wants to, he, ha he has every desire to, but he can't. Because he loves you so much, if you got rid of all evil, he'll have to give it me, you and everyone else. So he's yeah. giving you a chance to get saved. Yeah. Yeah. So people say to me, well, if that's the case, the whole world's, why, why is only a few people following Jesus, your God? Because it's like this. If you and I, me and Cain, you and all, went to say, like, Kenya or somewhere in Africa, and there's a very high immortality rate of, you know, like, women have uh, lose their babies, unfortunately. And I said to a woman, hello, how many children are you home to have? Well, I'm contemplating and have ten. Ten? Why? Because six are going to die. Why go for it? Because the four are going to live. So God knew from the outset, because he's eternal, he knows the ones who are going to set you, the ones going to call upon him. He doesn't make, he gives them a choice. So he knows that, and he'll go for it. He knew that Satan wanted to observe his authority and dethrone him. He knew about that. He hates you because you remind him of God. That's why Satan hates you. You remind God more powerful than Satan. Of course. Because Satan knows he's going to hell and make a fire. Hell is just a uh, So he knows. So God, so he hates you, so what he does is gives you religion. And religion takes away man's free will. It forces people to do things. See, let me just add to that, brother. Let me just add to that. Let me just add to that. This is exactly what I was saying about religion. Um, generically, the devil wants to complicate the issue yeah. and, and give us a work that we can never achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like law and all that. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter if you gave all your, if you gave your clothes and your money in your house, you walk the street naked and say, I've got nothing, take my life. And still, that's not enough because your heart is not right with God. Do you understand what I mean? You need to turn away completely from your life. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he asks. Yeah. He says, repent. Yeah. Repentance means turning away. Yeah. So you have to have a change of heart. Yeah. A, a Jew came to Jesus and he said, how, how can I be saved? He said, Jesus said, you must be born again. The Jew said to him, Nicodemus, how can I enter my mother's womb a second time? He said, no. Talking about being born of the Spirit. The message I had earlier. I have to wait till I die. I have to wait we need to be born. Not from the circumcision of the flesh, yeah. but the circumcision of the heart. Inwardly, inward emancipation. And realizing that we can't do it and just go, Lord, okay, I'm a sinner, I'm depraved. That's what I had to do. I can't hack it. I tried. You, you, you're the only one that's done it. Yeah. You're the only sinless one. The Jews tried to stick it on him. They had to bring false witnesses to put him on the cross because they couldn't find anything. He was innocent. The only man that yeah, all this earth, the only man who has kept the law completely. Yeah, yeah. They had to bring false witnesses. In fact, Jesus said to them, while they were trying to trick him with their questions, who here can accuse me of sin? Yeah. Silence. They knew who he was. And we have to, the Bible says, God was in Jesus Christ. It was a plan. Reconciling the world to himself. And he's made us ambassadors. People like me and my brother here and other Christians. Ambassadors to tell you, right, that, um, you know, well, how's the verse called? I've forgotten it though. Re God was in Jesus Christ, oh, reconciling the world to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he made him, this is him, yeah. he made him, which is Jesus, who knew no sin, become sin for us. So that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Yeah. So what Jesus did, you see in the old days, the Jews, some interesting information, the Jews had a yearly, a yearly sacrifice that they had to give to the priests. Yeah. It had to be a, a lamb, of, like pure, pure lamb, sinless, they had to yeah. check it. Could have no marks, without spot or blemish. And for the sins of the Israelites, so the priests would go into the Holy of Holies and present and, and smear the blood as a sacrifice. The Bible says there's no, there's, um, the blood, the blood yeah, that makes yeah, atonement yeah. for sins. That's what the Bible says. So it's not something strange. The Bible says that the, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Yeah. The life. So they had, but they had to look for pure life. Yeah. And when they smeared that blood, God forgave the people. Yeah. But that was every year. Yeah. It, it wasn't eternal. It, they had to keep coming back because people kept sinning. Oh, I 
you will go again. And then God knew that there, was that there, there had to be one sacrifice of a pure, sinless lamb eternally. This is Jesus. He died once for all. So that it's an eternal security that we have in the game. When I say eternal security, I mean an, an, an eternal assurance of salvation through belief in Him. I believe personally that we can turn our backs on God. Yeah, absolutely. Even, of, even course, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. of course, of course, of course. Amen. You know, you personally, Sorry. I, I'm not going to create, I'm not going to create any, any any sectarianism here. Yeah. No, but not I'm at just all. saying to you that the Bible says, if you endure to the end, yeah, of course, yeah. you shall be saved. Yeah. It gives us, it gives us, it gives us conditions of being saved. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 10:9 says, just confess with your mouth. Yeah. Now, listen. Something miraculous happened with me. Did it happen with you? Something Amen. miraculous. He wants to know you because I don't know you. He don't know you. I don't care how long you know him. Your mother doesn't know you. With all due respect to your mother, she don't know you, bro. God knows you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. And when God meets you and speaks to you, yeah. you're going to know it's him. Of course. But he asks for that sincerity. People to say, oh, come on, God, where you are, prove yourself. Come down with lightning. That's what Satan tried to do to Jesus when he was tempted in the wilderness. God don't flex to them kind of rubbish. He's God. He doesn't have to prove. Even if you no. Can I say something? Brother? One second, brother. Yeah. But if we go to him with a, a contract and admit, admit, he wants us to admit our depravity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to admit it to, to, to other men. No, no. men yeah. Go to God. Yeah. That's what he's there for. Yeah. And he wants you to have that contract heart and confess to him everything you've done that you can remember and believe who he is and believe that he died and rose again. And he will meet you on a very personal level. Yeah. That you will shock you. You'll change your heart. You will. Now, bro, like, probably you look like you come from the same walk of life with me. Right? It's free wheel. Yeah. It's free wheel. Yeah. Yeah. It's a free wheel. Yeah, yeah. Well, religion, as I say, if, 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 I, was, if I was dead, it would be just. It would be just. Like, I'd have no qualms, I'd stand before him, okay, yeah, which way, which way is hell? That way, because I, I, I knew the kind of man I was, and every morning I woke up, I was shocked that I was still alive, because of yeah, yeah, my yeah. evil mind. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. No, I'm not just talking normal evil. No, I'm not, I don't rape or kill anybody, I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm talking about, like, violence and drug abuse and, and all kinds of, all kinds of corruption being involved in, in the underworld and, and all kinds of being caught up in it, caught up in it. And I was surprised that I woke up every morning yeah. and then, God, boom, <laughs> boom, boom. He said, where are you? Where are you? What are you doing? You know I'm here and I had to just drop everything. I just, I just had to drop it. Because God is not mocked. Yeah, not yeah, mocked. Yeah, yeah. You give us time, but you can leave here, brother. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Yeah. You can leave here and get knocked over. Yeah, yeah. Would, you, would you see Christ? Now, I don't know your heart, right? but if you haven't accepted him as Lord and Savior, you will. And that's why he, he commands us to repent today. He says, when you hear the word, don't harden your heart because that's a normal human response. We want to go, ah, I have to give up this, I have to give up that, I have to stop doing this. But let me give you a little bit of advice and maybe some encouragement. Have you ever smoked? We, we are smoked everything. Right? Now, when you come back down to normal cigarettes, we know how addictive it is. And there's many addictions in life that we wonder how we're going to replace them. What am I going to do after a meal? I, 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 it's a habit. What am I going to do? How am I going to replace the satisfaction that I have there? But if you speak to any ex-smoker, I'm an ex-smoker, I can't abide the smell of a cigarette. Miraculous. But that's just biologically miraculous. Think about spiritually miraculous when you think, how am I going to replace all these things in my life? Which you know will lead you down the sewer. Turn around, you're gonna hate them. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're on the fish, you can have it back. I'm just curious. Yeah, I'll yeah, give you one. Yeah, I'll put my spikes over there. You are your brain, but you got the top. I want to do it. 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 I
but I want them. I'm not trying to get real. I want to lead them on the right, the right path. But obviously, I've got to figure that out. If I start taking people down paths, you know. What I mean? Don't take me the wrong way, you know, because this is just my way. When I'm, when I'm, the Bible talks about earnestly calling people, appealing to people, and I've really got a heart. Like I love you, like a brother in humanity. That, that's my heart for people. And when I'm speaking like this, people can get a bit. But it's what you're trying to put well, fire. Yeah, yeah. And in, in, in regards to your children, I love that bit. The Bible says that if you teach your child, I'm paraphrasing here, you may be able to remind me of the scripture. If you teach your child, child the right ways yeah. early, they won't depart from oh, yeah. when they grow up. So I don't know how old the children are, but now is the time to teach them the right way. Now, even if you don't commit, even if you don't commit to Christ, yeah, which I hope you do. You, you look at the, read the words of Jesus. Go to John. The book of John. The book of, book of John. John, the fourth gospel. Huh? Remember, I said John was the most rich. Sorry? New Testament. Gospel of John, the fourth gospel. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the New Testament. The reason I put um, it towards John is because John was the most beloved of all the gospels. When, when, I'm sorry, of all the disciples. When the disciples were quarreling about who was going to be best in the kingdom and whatever, you know, so they were all looking forward to that. They were all competing. John was resting on Jesus' breast. Listening to him teach. John was the one that fought the cross when they rested and fled. And that's why I'm pointing towards John, because he had something very special. I didn't say this. Sorry, brother, one more thing. I saw this that. Is why I didn't say that bit on the uh, God gave John revelation about oh, yeah, yeah. the end times. Definitely. He revealed it to him. John was, and perhaps John, so uh, the sources say, is the only uh, disciple to die of natural causes. Very special. So when John was writing about Jesus, he's hearing on Jesus' breast what Jesus is saying. Yeah. He's, he's, not sitting as one of the, he's not sitting as one of the disciples being told. He's reclining yeah. and going, yes, Lord. He, he really yeah. he loved him. And when you go to John, yeah, yeah. when you go to John and you read Jesus' words, just imagine, if you can, like when you read a book, how it would have been. Now for me, there's, if I was to pull one out, if I was to pull one out of the dark, or out of the light, it would be, uh, it kind of blew my mind, where the Bible says, uh, Jesus was followed by a great multitude of people. Now, a multitude, if you look at Google, is, is maybe a thousand, a couple thousand, a lot of people. A great multitude, maybe 10,000. Now, can you imagine 10,000 people surrounding one man, all trying to touch him because he's healing everyone? Even people can't reach him. They want to touch the hem of his garment, and they're being healed. Now, this is this is this is a man filled with the power of God. That that reputation has spread like wildfire from from a land that is hungry for redemption, and now he's come. The Bible says the great multitude followed him for three days. One man. It came to a point where Jesus had to go into the sea into a boat because he was he was getting so pushed back. He loved the people. He wanted to teach them, but he stepped into the boat and he took them in the boat. Wonderful God, we serve God. So I'd invite you to do that to, to, to go into John, do things like that, and in your own personal space, be real. Just be real with him. That, that's all he asks. He's not looking for articulation. No. He's not looking for wise words. No. Look at you. He wants to know you. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you went, he didn't know what he was saying. Ha. See what I mean? Be real with him on a personal level. And believe you me, he said, he, you see, he said, he said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. Now remember what he said, he's not going to force anybody, he's not going to put him into the kingdom. He's given us that free will. He wants us to choose him. He said, behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone will open the door to me, I will enter into him spiritually into your heart and I will dine with him and he with me. Very personal. And what that scripture is speaking about is 
intimate relationship with the creator of the universe that only you know and no one else knows. Because he, he, he relates to everyone differently. Yeah, personally. Level. Yeah. So he, he, wants to, he wants to speak to you and show you things that you, blow your mind. Yeah, yeah. Blow your mind. Yeah. We can't see ourselves. We wouldn't no. understand them ourselves. Our conscience yeah. means we've knowledge. Conscience means we've knowledge with science. So when we look, as many people say to me, prove to me God exists. Well, our conscience tells us it's a God. Yeah, yeah. So our conscience means we've knowledge and science. When we lie, steal, we do it with knowledge knowing it's true. Because God has given light to every man. Yeah. And what sins a man to have? It's not how good a body is. No, 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 no. No, no, no. That's what, that's what it said. Because if it is, because man, because I believe, I still believe that hell is, is more good people in hell than there are evil people. Yeah. Because what the deception is this. Some people believe, like I believed, that there's so much evil I couldn't be saved. And some people believe that they're so good they don't need to be saved. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. both are wrong. Both are wrong. Yeah. Both are wrong with them. Yeah. So what sends a man to hell is not a good or bad he is. It's one sin, the sin of unbelief. Yeah. 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 If he refuses to believe yeah. in his conscience that one, he's a sinner, and two, he needs to be saved. It's a bit like this. When a person in America or this country you know, gets caught with corporate, you know, get caught with bus business, yeah. and the hands get caught in the cookie jar, yeah. Only if they own up and said, look, I'm guilty, I, I, I'm guilty. No, they lied on the roof and they got a harsher sentence. Oh, yeah. The first thing Adam did, he found a tree. Adam, where are you? Who did he blame? Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. Oh, yeah. the blame, man yeah, is in the blame of blaming yeah, each other. Blame, yeah. I also say to people, man will not take responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Man will not take responsibility. Like, I also say to people, like sheep. You know, a, a woman, a, a daddy, a, a little child says to her daddy, Daddy, aren't the sheep nice and white? Until the snow comes down. And the snow acts as a backdrop behind the sheep. And it shows that they're not as white as they claim to be. And it's like this, I always say to women, you know, you know when you dust your table down? Yeah, yeah. You know, you see dust on the table. You dust it down, and all the dust is gone. You open the curtains, the light comes in, and it says, and it, it, it says it's exposes the dust. Well, the light didn't make the dust, it just exposes the dust. And when we go before the Holy of Holies, we're not as clean as we make out to be, you see. You know, and I always had a story of a young boy. The father said to him, son, you know, I love you to be See that cabinet over there? He said, yes, Dad. There's a very expensive vase in there. I don't want you to go in there because it's priceless. Remember, the boy does not understand the value of the vase. He's told he's priceless. So anyway, one day, when he's coming back from school, he goes into Tesco and sees one identical for a fiver. He said, I wonder what my father would lie to me about the value of this vase. I have been told it's worth a fiver. And then he goes into Sainsbury's and sees one exactly the same for the fiver. So only one day, out of curiosity, he decides to go into the cabinet to see the claim of truth. Because he's seen one for five years, see? So anyway, he goes into the cabinet, opens the cabinet door, lifts it up. Why my dad lied to me about the value of this father? I've seen one, it's identical. Anyway, here's a muffin in it, here's a key in the door, it's his dad coming back. So anyway, he tries to put the vase back and it hits the top of the uh, hits the top of the cabinet door. Shatters. <laughs> his father comes through, he says, son, what have you done? I thought I told you not to go into that cabinet. He said, don't worry, Dad. I can easily replace it. I've got five pounds. I've seen one in Tesco's. I've got five pounds in my bank account. No, son. That boss costs half a million pounds. Right. Anyway, the son starts crying. Crying and weeping. He says, look, son, I love you too. I'm I saw, I saw what, I'll replace it somehow. I'll replace it. And the moral story is, the son never understood the value of the vase. He really believed in his heart that it's worth a fiver. Many people go to church, the Catholic church, I've got tracks there of ex, ex nuns of Catholics. They go to the Catholic church, they go to a window cleaner, does this, they do a couple of sins. After the service, all, all the church, all the church, any church around here, and they put five pounds into to cover for the sins of done because they don't understand the value of what it is to God. Uh, yeah, yeah. What did it cost God to replace the value of the law of the law of us breaking us?
didn't cost five pounds. We didn't get upset about if we placed on the boss for five pounds, of course you wouldn't. But when the boy understood the true value of it, then he was able to find the boss in his heart. I was in a yeah, I was in a phone nation. I was in a I couldn't give a toss. I couldn't give a toss about God's law. Wait a minute, brother. Because it was written, written on my heart. Suddenly it was written on my heart. Then I knew. When God, when God turns up, two things happen. He shows you who He is. That He's holy, unapproachable, and He shows you who I am. Holy, a sinner. Worthless. Right, worthless. Not worthless. Maybe you know. Yeah, yeah. So the boy couldn't understand. It was only when he tried to understand the truth. What did it cost God to replace? value of the law that I have broken, but it didn't cost five pounds. He said, see my hands. You see my side. You see my feet that pierce for you. That's what it costs the value of God to replace the law that you and I have broken. You know, it's like this. Sorry, but it's, like, sorry, but it's like this. A young boy was looking at a heater. You know, he says, and his dad says to him, son, see that heater over there? He says, look, son, I don't want to go near it because you'll burn yourself. He says, okay. Anyway. One day, sorry, sorry, one day he puts his little hand out. Ooh, what's happened? He's gone from realising it's not to experiencing it's not. I realised and knew there was a God. He had to go to church. It wasn't until I reached out for his forgiveness and mercy that I experienced it when he forgave my sins. So many people know about this. When I reached out, the young boy realised it was hot. He didn't realise it. He knew in his heart it was hot. Experience. Experience. Yeah. You know, go on. Do you have any... No, I just want to tell you. Where's your name from? Okay. James. That's a biblical name. Tell me. James. Dean. James, a rugby player. You can see that. You see, God wants us to have loads of questions, brother. So yeah. If you have any questions, like even if we even if we can't answer them, I'll do my best to go away and find out. And I'll, I'll give answers to James if you're not going to be here next week. Like, I'll endeavour to answer those questions. But, so, so feel free to ask questions now. Uh, go away and do your own research. If something doesn't make sense, and there's now's the time to ask. Like, if something doesn't make sense, you know. Yes. Do you believe uh, you believe from sin? From sin. I'm back in a minute. Thank you, bro. You know, um, like, 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 like accumulation of sin or sin brings on um, physical ailment. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Yeah. Let me give you. Let me give you a little. Let me give you a little. See, God, God is one second, but you can't see one second. No, no, one second. Fucking yeah. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. I'm a very fighter. Good man. Yeah. Um, right. Now, okay, where was I? Alright, now, God in his wisdom. God in his wisdom. So sorry. Okay, there's somebody very close to me. Right? Who died. Now, this person was quite young and had a lot of unforgiveness in his heart. Never smoked, never drunk. Good person, outwardly. You see how it all boils down to the heart, but in his heart, in his heart. Oh, yes. You gave me one before. I can only, yeah. I can only talk by oh, yes. spirit. There was a yeah. lot of other yeah. yeah. Now, as a result, yeah. 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 As a result yeah. 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 it did start, it did start to affect his body in a degenerative manner, yeah. Yeah. rapidly. Yeah. Yeah. Very good one. Yeah. Now, in order to help yeah. this person, yeah. <laughs> I went and did a lot of research. Because the doctor only gave him six months, and I was desperately trying to find something. To help, some, some, anything. That I was praying, of course. But if there was some kind of medical breakthrough that I'd heard of, I was asked out. Oh, we'd get the money together and send it to Stockholm, wherever it took. You know? And I came across this article. I don't. The the, 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 the professor, or the doctor's name doesn't come to mind now. We were talking about seven years ago. But if you Google it, you'll find out. He 
has 50 certified documented uh, uh, experimental uh, people. 50 documented cases, excuse me, right? Whereby people who were unforgiving, who had developed ailments, in particular tumors. When they began to forgive people, the tumor started to shrink. 50 documented cases. Oh, that's interesting. This is all from the heart. Yeah, yeah. Now we, now, come on, I mean, it doesn't take much working out because we know if, if somebody upsets us and we keep the yeah, anger yeah, in there yeah, for yeah, days, yeah, yeah. you know what it's like. Yeah, you can't yeah. sleep, you're <laughs> thinking about all kinds of wicked things. To, it's, it's not only spiritually it take, damning. It takes you over. It, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, takes yeah, you over. Yeah, it's yeah, biologically yeah, damning, yeah, yeah. mentally damning, yeah. emotionally damning. Yeah. You put all those together, brother, and yes, it does affect your health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it can be rapid and terminal. But it's a curse, isn't it? It's so, curse. you know, yeah. Christ calls us to himself to cure that, to put us to the source of our problem, which is the heart. Yeah, yeah. It's to sort the heart out. You have to desperately sort wicked, the heart yeah. out. Yeah. Don't worry about all your good works. I've done the work. Yeah. Sort your heart out. Yeah. And you'll be you'll have life and you'll have it more abundant. Yeah. Free, freedom. Trust me. Yeah. 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 You won't believe for forgiveness. Yeah. This is when it says uh, forgive those who trespass against you. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Now if we don't forgive, that could be the Christian's worst enemy. Can we can be. we can do all the good works, yeah. but if we're carrying around the hate of unforgiveness, mm. when, when we stand in front of God, we ain't gonna be forgiven. No. So that's where the devil can drag us yeah, right yeah. down right it's at the end. A door Unforgiveness door is, is a play. Yeah. Once you forgive, you feel the release of yeah. the forgiveness yeah. that comes to, to you. The yeah. That's the way I found it. Yeah. I was an alcoholic, I was a And when yeah. you go to Christ and he forgives you, yeah. Yeah. you'll feel like a whole yeah. Yeah. house. Yeah. 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 You know what, can I just say yeah. this? This is yeah. not yeah. just yeah. a yeah. personal yeah. experience. Look at look yeah. what Christians look at. Because tonight, you can activate all the forgiveness that you want by forgiving someone tonight. It'll flood into uh, Isaiah, you Isaiah, by Isaiah, forgiving I'll someone, maybe a father-in-law, yeah, yeah. a friend, yeah. someone from school that yeah, you haven't yeah. forgiven. As soon as You'll you unlock that door, the forgiveness is going to come in, lighter. claim you, yeah. and that's, that's going to hold you. That's the beacon to Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Showing you where he's at. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of illnesses come through on forgiveness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Forgive anyway. Yeah, come on, yeah, yeah, thank you. And he's saying a lot of our illnesses yeah, yeah, yeah. is because yeah. see, you see, when you don't Christ forgive someone, yeah. it is not done to that person. It is done to you. Yeah, yeah. Because you not forgiving someone. Yeah. Yeah. All sorts of enemies. Yeah. 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 So forgive our enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Forgive yeah. And he's, yeah. He's showing us how to yeah. be healthy. Yeah. 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 He's, he's, he's not, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't yeah. talk yeah. For, for no reason. Yeah. He's saying, look, not only will you, you get eternal salvation, you'll be bodily healthy. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be emotionally healthy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he knows us, he built us, yeah. Yeah. he created us. And he, he, he's not only our father, but he is our friend. Yeah. He, he wants, he wants, to, he wants yeah. to sit and suck spiritual beer with you, you know what I mean? Tell jokes to you, reveal secrets of the kingdom to you. Only you. Yeah, yeah. That like you might go and tell him and encourage him, but, but God won't speak to you, you not to speak to him. It's a personal, it's a personal it's thing, brother. So on this, uh, on this forgiveness, on this forgiveness tip, yeah. You can need, or listen, God we need is help. Point, we need help in that. We need, we need, sometimes we might need help in We might actually need the Lord's help to forgive someone. Because some things are hard to forgive, isn't it? Some things we can't do to ourselves. Like. But, but we need we, his help. Like. Yes. Ask him to, to, ask him to give, us, uh, give us the spirit of for, forgiveness. Help us to forgive. Like. Brother, yes, well, listen, listen think about it. Think about it, right? Think about it. Now, even deep scared like that. See, Jesus being God, right? He leaves us with no excuse. Because he's telling us, if I'm God, and I leave where I'm at, come down here and become flesh for you, live the life you couldn't live, yeah? Be crucified and take the penalty that you deserve, yeah, yeah? and show you that even while they ram the, the, the crown of thorns on my head, yeah. I forgave them. Yeah, yeah. 
So he not only walked the walk and taught the talk, yeah. he taught us yeah. how to continue yeah. after he left yeah. and went to heaven. Yeah. And he's saying, I've done it all yeah. and I've shown you how to forgive. Because if I can forgive, being God, surely you can forgive yeah. God. Yeah. Surely you can forgive God. Surely you can what, what, what is it going to take out of your day? Yeah. Yeah. Even if you, no, come on, I'm going to be extreme. Even if you insulted, if you insulted your mother, if you insulted your mother, yeah, yeah. my mother's been insulted many times here. <laughs> what did they say about Jesus? Jesus was called, Jesus was called, they said he was possessed. Yeah. They had demons in him. All kinds of things. Yeah. Heinous, blasphemous things. This is God walking around. Now he could have just blinked his eyes and they would have disappeared. But he had work to do, and in doing that work and forgiving them, yeah. he was showing us how to live. He said, no matter what they do to you, yeah, yeah. do not return insult for insult. Yeah. If, now I'm not saying you can't defend yourself. Someone breaks into your house, your family's there at night, bam, straight. But at the same time, he calls us to be wise enough, you know, you, you don't go overboard. Oh yeah, yeah. Because that's the way of the world. Because once, you, once someone's down, restrain them. Yeah. Get the law. Yeah. Because Christ called us to be obedient to the authorities. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You've got a right to protect your house. Yeah. But once he's down, you haven't got no right to stamp on his head and then take something and slit his throat. Maybe he's going, okay, let the law give him life. Yeah. Yeah. So Christ has given us freedom. But he's asking us to be wise yeah. in that freedom. Yeah. In the context. Yeah. And we know when we've gone too far. Yeah. We know when our we, egos we kicked do. in. We, do. Yeah. Yeah. we know. Yeah. Yeah. We know. We know when we're bullying someone. Yeah. We know when some, someone's asking us to forgive them. And we can, but we're just being stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. We know what we're doing. God knows. Yeah. And he wants, us, he wants us to be totally honest yeah. about our inability to do what he did. Yeah. And step into his righteousness. That's why he did it. See what I mean? Let it go, brother. Let, let the wheel go. You're not your own God. He's your God. Yeah. I can't hack it, never let you have yeah. Let go the wheel. Yeah. Sometimes he our, want, our he own wants nature to, might want to do it wrong, isn't it? Like, said, our own nature might want to do it wrong. He said, I'm the door. So we have to deny ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, yes, I know. He said, I'm the door. Yeah. He said, if you enter in through him, there's only one way to the kingdom, through Jesus. He said, you, you, you will go in and out and find pasture. Yeah, yeah. Come on, brother. I mean, we know that there are many false prophets out there directing us away from that door. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus is telling us, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the resurrection and the life. You see, life is in him. Even he said, if uh, he said he would, he, um, he said he could give you rivers of living water yeah, that yeah. will well up to the spirit. overflowing. He said, if you drink of the water that he gives you, you will never thirst again. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm not thirsty, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm not thirsty. I'm full of joy. Yeah. When I think about what he's done for me, he gives you courage yeah. like you never had. You think you've got courage? You ain't got no courage. Tell me straight. Want to do I thought I had courage. I'd take anyone on. Don't care what size you are, bro. I'm telling you now. And it wouldn't matter if it was broad daylight. It wouldn't matter where it was. It matter if it's a police station across the road. You're gonna know. I thought I was a man. I thought I was a man, but I was no one because I'll tell you why? Because I had to keep proving myself because I, I felt inadequate. That's why we do it. That's why a man tries to prove himself because he feels that he has to because he wants to be seen as perfect by everyone. Inwardly, he knows he's rubbish. And Christ calls us to admit that depravity before the throne of grace. He says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Jesus has given you access to the Father. He's done the work and given you access. When he, when he, you have to humble yourself. When he died, the earth shook. Yeah, yeah. The veil in the temple, there was a veil in the temple. 
that veil in the temple. Remember I told you about the sacrifices that the priests had to do? There was a veil yeah. which led into the Holy of Holies. Once they crossed that veil, that was the Holy of Holies. Sometimes they, they had to tie rope, a rope to the priest's foot. Only the priest, a Levite, could go in. Right? Could go in. But if that priest weren't right with God, yeah, you have to pull him out. He dropped the dead as soon as he went in there. Just pull him out with the rope. They used to put him, to pull him out with the rope. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Crap yeah. themselves. No one's going in there. They're all sinners. He went in there for them. How can they go in there? Yeah. So God is so holy. Yeah. How yeah. can we attain? You're pure holy. How? We can't. Yeah. So when he died, he said, don't worry. When he died, he gave up this spirit and the veil in the temple split. Yeah. He, he done away with it. Yeah. He's given us access to the Holy of Holies. That's right. He said, come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. He said, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to it's remove it. all unrighteousness yeah. from you, bro. He's faithful and just. He doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. Muhammad can't do it. Allah can't do it. And no one can do it. They're all striving. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how many works. You look, look at look at all these poor, wretched people, yeah. right? Striving for righteousness by working. You can't do it. Ask any of them if they feel like a good person. You can never do it. No. They 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 need peace. Yeah. Inwardly, a man or woman needs peace. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You'll only find it in Him. You won't find it. You look everywhere. Go, go look. I look. I look places. I look places. I even, I even went into a, a, a book once. You know, they talk. That's fine. Let them. I even went into a book once. You know when they talk about uh, visualization and, and creating your own wealth and you know being your own god. It's just the, the devil sending another fake in there saying, "You can do it. You can do it. You don't need God. You can do it." Fake. And you get caught up in it because you know you need more than what you can do. So you look for anything, and they all fall flat on their face yeah. until you meet Jesus Christ. Until you kneel in front of him and let the wheel go. Let it go. He's got the wheel anyway. What are you trying to drive for? Backseat driver. He is the creator, bro. Let him drive. Just say, okay, I'm in the back seat, Lord. Where do you want to take me? What do you want me to do? For me, it was come here and tell everyone. That, that's what he told me. For you, it could be something else. Yeah, for him, something else. But he has a he has a he has a task. He has a task, plan. He has a task yeah. for everyone. Yeah. He has a task for you, bro. Yeah. And he's waiting for you. Yeah. Because he's knocking. Yeah. And he said, don't, he said, don't harden your heart, James. He said, Just, he said the devil will come and he talks about hearing the word. Hearing the word and the devil comes like a crow when it goes on rocky ground and grabs it away from you because you hear it and you think, yeah. I'm, yeah, I feel, I feel encouraged about life. You go, you go down the road, you see a couple of girls, you start thinking about what someone did to you yesterday, that was out of order, and slowly, uh, it's like the crow, uh, the seed not, not being planted on fertile ground, because the crow comes and, and snatches it away before it can germinate. And that's why Christ says, today is the day. When you hear him, do not harden your heart. Yeah. And when you go to a church, that's why you see the preacher going, does anybody want to give their life to Jesus? Because everybody hears the word from. Yeah. Yeah. And inwardly we're going, oh, my wife's sick and oh, my mate's in the pub. He's yeah. fighting. And he just says, look, uh, well, he's... So I invite you today to give your life to the Lord, brother. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the best decision speaking to you, I invite you to give your life to him. Right now. The best decision in the whole world is the best decision you can make. You know, it doesn't take much. Everything, everything. It just takes you. Away. It just takes you having a. Away. Just takes you having a will. If we gain the whole world and lose the soul, what good is it? If we gain the whole world and lose the soul, it's no good. What good is it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. If we gain the whole world. Lose the soul. Like we can't be rich enough. He's right. We can't be rich enough. Yeah. Even the richest man in there. We can't. We can't. We can't, we can't be famous enough. We can't have enough women. Yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. will satisfy. Yeah, more and more. Nothing, nothing will satisfy the human yeah, craving yeah, yeah, for yeah. peace. Yeah, yeah. Only Jesus. We, we, we can be still empty inside. And he, we'll be empty dead yeah. inside. Yeah, we can have millions and be dead inside. And so he says. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that yeah. 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 rich man oh, thirty years ago. Remember him? Uh, he became a recluse, didn't he? Uh, yeah. you remember that bloke? I can't remember. How you? Yeah, that, that's exactly that's the one. He had everything, remember? but nothing. Yeah, he, he became a recluse and he lost himself away. And his hair grew, his nails were growing. You know, he just hid himself away. He was million, and he just died a recluse. Sorry, I missed the flashback. Oh yeah, we say if we have millions, they say and lose our souls. What good? What are you going to give in exchange for your soul? What money can you? It's like Jesus. He put it this way once. He said, when you give up your life and turn to Him, it could feel like you're going to lose an arm. Oh yeah, yeah. It could feel like that way, but he said it's better you lose that arm yeah, yeah. and go into heaven yeah, yeah. than your whole body be cast into hell. Yeah, because it says it's, it's, it's that simple. Yeah. It says if and you find your life, you will lose it as well, doesn't it? Exactly. If you find your life, so, you lose it. You but it really finds it's his life you want to find, isn't it? And then we have everything. We have everything. Then you see. Then there's so, a simple so account. What's stopping, what's stopping you, brother? What's stopping you? Honestly, man to man, what's stopping you? I just. Uh, it's one of them when you talk about, or when I talk about religion, it's kind of like, I, I can see um, the way my mum talks it, mm. I kind of believe there's a God, but everyone's kind of, it's that, almost like that new age, that new age kind yeah. of everything. To, oh, okay, like interfaith, everything, every, every yeah, way is I, the right way. The more I've looked into that, mm. through watching, like, like I was saying before, through mm. watching mm. So, so many of the debates, here, mm. you know, uh, uh, uh. you've been led here today for a reason. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take much work, you know. I believe you, I believe you, you didn't end up in a temple somewhere yeah, yeah, with, yeah, with, yeah. with a Buddha. Uh, you, you ended yeah, yeah. up here. Yeah. You, you were led. Be, you were drawn here. I believe. Today. You were led yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what's stopping you? So it is a bit strange. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. Do you have a current religion now? Well, I do you know. I'm, I'm kind of a like, kind of weak Christian. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm Christian. You know. Yeah. I, 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 but not practicing. This. Not, 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 not. You know, I try, practice. but I don't massively. Yeah. I don't go to church. Or, you know, yeah. I mean. well, can, can I ask yes, a question? Was well, you was like? Uh, yes, I mean, I, I, is it? Is, yeah, can, yeah, can I ask a question? Is, is, is you still like? Would it be Catholic or and would it be something in them kind of? No, no. I wouldn't be. Yes, I don't know. Oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anything. Loosely, kind of. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that, that oh, I see. That's what I mean. I'll ask you a question. Are you a Christian? Yes. That's my question. Right, exactly. You see how the devil wants to come in and pluck those dogs. There you go, there you go. The beautiful see? Christian with the Holy Spirit. See? Devil, devil. I'm a see? devil now. Look at the yeah. Holy Spirit. No, I'm talking Very about the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Now you're, now, oh, see, yeah. see. It's, oh, it's oh, close. Yeah. What is the Holy Let Spirit me for? try and divert him away. No, no. And change the whole no, no. spirit of the conversation. No, no. I came in quite, quite polite and, and, and he called me jovial devil. and cordial oh, to you. But now, really, what I want to do Why is change the subject. No, and I'm, 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 I'm against a Christianity. Yeah? yeah? It's a private conversation. Yeah. No, it's okay, right. brother. I'm not just making right. you aware of what you're seeing it in your face. You're seeing how the spiritual realm operates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, when you become a Christian, and I'm not just talking about a look, when you say you're a cool Christian, yeah, yeah. there's no such thing. Because no, you have to, like I said, turn away. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's what he asked for. Yeah. He's not asking for a partial, oh Lord, but I'm going to be a part time. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is yours. The rest of the time I'm going string for love. That alone cut it. He wants a complete submission and turn it away from your sinful life. And the only reason that you do that is because you realise who he is, what he's done, and what you need to do in order to achieve salvation, which is believing in his death and resurrection as your saviour. He, he saved you. Saved me. He saved you, brother. We were all heading to hell because nobody can keep the law. That, he yeah, came yeah. to save us. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. To pull us from the fire. Yeah, yeah. I think.
And he just said, well, I've done it now. You just, all I ask you to do is acknowledge me. I'm God. And really, I could wipe you out. I just ask you, because I love you, because you're, my, you're my child. I created you. Just acknowledge me. It's like if you have a son. Like, I've got a girl, right? If she walked into the room, if she walked into the room, and and like, she's just come from school and she just walked straight past me. I'll be like, good evening. Where's the respect that I am to? You know what I mean? And that's what God asks for. He just wants me to acknowledge who he is. Don't, like, he, he, he's not trying to chain you to a life where you have to order every little thing because he wants to, he wants to, uh, how can I put it, develop you as a person. Yeah, yeah. Because if you imagine, if you imagine a circle, right? Imagine a circle, right? And as humans, we sit around the outskirts and whatever. But in our core, in that dot, that dot in the middle, the nucleus, that's the unsettled part. That's the part that needs peace. Yeah? That's the part that God wants to reach and develop you into the man you should be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you with me? That's what he wants to do. He wants to divert you away from the world and develop that and I say, put that place of peace first and then develop you into a man of God. A light on a hill. People look at you and go, oh my God, this guy, what's this, this guy, man? What's this guy, what's up to him? But they'll see by you that something miraculous is happening. You haven't just been indoctrinated by a cult. Because they'll, they'll see that you're, you're free. You'll just behave that way. And you'll be more courageous than you'll ever be. The word courage, the reason I keep mentioning courage is because it's particular to me. Because it's something I've hunted for all my life. <laughs> That's why I keep going back to it. And I was just uh, failing. And the more you fail, the more you try, the more people you want to take on, the bigger you want him to be. It doesn't work. It never works. And when you when you give up your self-righteousness and know that Christ is the only righteous one and you step into his righteousness, yeah, then you realize that you okay, Lord. And you, you, the, the courage you have, the courage that that gives you is to, is to forgive your enemies. It's to tell someone that you love them when they, they tell you to go and F this person. It's to bless someone when they curse you. You can't get that kind of courage yeah, yeah. from the flesh. No. That's, the flesh is that's something miraculous. And I'm not talking about just doing it, but like lip service. I'm talking about meaning it. Let me give you a story. Let me give you a story. This is how God works. So this, is, this, is a, this is a testimony of my life. And I'm going to paraphrase somewhat. There was someone. And it's like the devil sent him to me. Because all I wanted to do was knock him out. I'm being honest. I, even as a Christian. Yeah. He just riled me badly. Oh, it's like this guy. And I'm trying to be like loving to everyone. And this, it's like I'm being tested now. Oh, yeah, because yeah. now, I, yes, Cain, but I'm going to prune you now. You know, you have a plant and it bears fruit. Yeah, yeah. You snip the leaves yeah, so yeah. you bear more fruit. Yeah, yeah. It's how God develops our relationship with Him. He makes us better, better people as the days go on. So I knew God was trying to show me something about this person. I said, God, I know you don't want me to knock him out. I know that. I know you want me to, to love him as a brother in humanity and forgive him. Yeah. But I can't do it. I'm telling you the oh, truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was finding it so difficult. And you know what he showed me? He revealed the scripture to me in my angst. He said, the reason I asked you to love your enemies is not through lip service. I ask you to love your enemies because you have devoted your life to me and you're my child. I've got your back. No one messes with you. Okay? So the reason I ask you to pray for those who persecute you is because I'm coming for them. The scripture says, listen, it's very serious. The scripture says it is a righteous thing with God to visit tribulation on those who bring it to you. Once you become 
his child or pray for those who persecute you. He's saying, pray for my mercy. He's asking you to pray that God doesn't wipe them out and gives them a chance to repent. So when God showed me that, I was on my knees. I knew it wasn't just about lip service. I was I was praying for the person because I, I felt afraid for the safety. Because it wasn't an attack on me personally, it was an attack on God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very blasphemous stuff. Was, very blasphemous stuff was coming out of me. Three weeks later, guy comes to me, shakes my hand. Same guy. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Guy comes to me, shakes my hand, and says, You know what? And he just relents and confesses about his whole behavior and how bad it was and how now he's seen the error of his ways. I hadn't spoken to him at all. This is God's word. Now do you see how God's brought him into the light through my prayer? There's a reason why God asks us to forgive our enemies. Not just to be to be nicey dicey. It's a spiritual war, God says. We don't battle against flesh and blood. People trying to fight us all the time. Well, it's a, it's, we battle against principalities and powers. A host, a host, thousands of wickedness, demons in high places. And when we pray, angels fight on our behalf. And when I was praying for that guy, angels were fighting the demons, bearing them down on him. And somehow, God had mercy on that guy. And I hope, I'm hoping, one second brother, let me finish. And I'm hoping now, I'm still praying, I haven't given up, that through this, he will come to Christ. Yeah? And that, that's just my little testimony about how forgiveness works in a powerful, it works in a powerful way. We don't just go around being, oh, I love you, I love you. No, no. We are not, we're not doormats. We're not weak in the, in the world we sense of the world. I keep saying it takes a humongous amount of strength to forgive like we are Christ on the cross. He said, take up your cross and follow me. Remember what I did? While I was being crucified, I forgave. Do the same. And, yes, Lord, I forgive. Help my own forgiveness. Lord, I forgive. Help my own forgiveness. 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 Like I said it before, what's stopping you from giving your life to Jesus right now? Well, you, you, Honestly, you, you, what's stopping you? With, with, with me, I've got a, what, certain points in my life. I've, I've known things. I just know. Yeah. You know How to speak, but let me speak. Let me speak. Yeah, let me yeah, speak. Yeah, yeah. But I, you know, a couple of, I like three incidents. I just, I just knew. Right. Yeah. That, that made me realise how important belief is. Yeah. Because with that belief, I done, I done some, you know, I, I didn't even think about it, I just did it. Yeah. I didn't even think about it, yeah. Yeah. I just did it and I was there, uh, and it was happening, yeah. it was all over my, all over, all over my head. Yeah. So, I, 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 got to, I have got to look at it, but I can't. I'm just asking you, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's an invitation, yes, it's, a it's up to you, but what I will do, I can promise you that I will, you'll be on my prayer list, definitely, but definitely, it's been a great pleasure speaking to you, bro. Yeah, but, but also, what I was going to say there, um, you see, also, there's some yeah, things that you're going to say, yeah, let me, let me, let me, I see your work, thank you, I've got a lot of time for you, man, thank you, bro, we'll be lucky, keep praying for you, yes, yeah, today, uh, a good message of encouragement initially uh, for, the, for the masses, telling them about God's plan of redemption from Adam and Eve, sending the prophets, speaking of Jesus being the saviour, Jesus fulfilling all the prophecies, and the message of salvation through his death, death and resurrection. And um, I had a really good conversation with uh, a gentleman called James, and I would appeal to all the brothers and sisters who are watching to pray for James, who you've just heard me have a conversation with. Uh, he, 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 we all need Christ, but you can tell he's reaching out. Just, just pray that those doubts that he has, those little doubts, right on the edge of success that is trying to pull him away, let him fly. Let him take Jesus' hand and uh, pray against any any adverse situations that may stop him from coming to God. Um, 
Yeah, and a really good conversation with James, as, as you can see. And I bless God for it. I bless God that God sends us here to be courageous, even though every week we get bumped and barged verbally, physically. That we still stand strong for God. He is so good. Jesus is so good. You know, even when we're in a, in a dungeon of, of no hope, it feels like there's no hope. God is teaching us something. And we have to listen to him. When we're, we're, there's always hope. Listen to the words of Jesus because he's trying to teach you how to progress as a person. So I would encourage you all, keep praying for us. Pray for James. And lift up the name of Jesus. He is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Is he? And you're